All of us SRT climbers like to have canopy anchors and if you're doing spar removals, if you're moving around in the canopy, very often the fastest, quickest way to get on the trees with a choked canopy anchor using the eye of your rope, the eye splice. And there's a lot of ways to do that. I'm gonna run through a couple, a little bit of the pros and cons. And I wanna tell you guys why I personally don't like the notch quickie for this application. A lot of folks love it. It is technically safe, but I don't like it. And I'll tell you why. So when I'm doing crane work, for example, I'll belay off the crane after I've anchored the top of the branches and I will usually choke off an anchor, especially if I'm in something tall, because I like to use a short rope when I'm doing crane work, but I still need to be able to get to the ground. So I've got my SRT device, maybe I've got an 80 foot rope and I'm 65 feet up. I'll do a really quick choking anchor so that I can belay out. I've got my redundancy, I'm safe. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Obviously the first and kind of the most common is a knot. Now, a lot of folks don't like to climb on bowlins and uh, they're, they're right not to do so. But if you take a running bowlin and back it up with either a Yosemite finish or this other finish, I'll just do a Yosemite for you guys because that's probably what you're more familiar with, then this is perfectly safe and quick. Um, I limit, I cut my potential, like my total maximum load down by 50% or so by tying this knot, but that's still way more than enough to catch me. I've got very little play in the system. Anything that's going to cause this to break is gonna break me too, so it's good enough, super good enough. It can't slip, you know, that's not gonna come undone. And typically I'm not leaving this tied for all that long anyway. And the big risk of just a bowlin by itself, if you didn't know, and I'll show you, the reason we don't tie a bowlin by itself is if you slack and tighten it over and over again, you can see that whole knot starts to come loose and actually this tail will just walk itself through eventually. Um, I'll show you here in a little different configuration, but with a backup, totally safe, totally solid. It's just a little bit slow and it leaves a little bit of tangles hanging so maybe it could get snagged. It's good, but it's not maybe ideal. The next thing a lot of folks will use is a carabiner. Now this is fast. I'm using the eye. I've got my carabiner on there. It's choked. I can do that really quickly, very reliably. The beauty of the carabiner, it has an auto locking gate, so I'm not afraid of accidentally not locking it. Um, the big concern here is that technically I'm loading this gate, I'm loading the, the spine of the carabiner against the tree, which is generally not recommended by the manufacturer because carabiners are super strong loaded end to end like this, but loaded bent over the top of something like this, that weakens the total maximum load. I happen to know from testing and observation that on big diameter spars, the side loading involved in this carabiner uh, weakens it so little that actually the splice is gonna be the weak point. So on a situation like this, the splice is gonna break long before the carabiner. So I'm actually totally comfortable using this in many situations. Uh, the one time I wouldn't use a, something like this is if I'm on a very narrow diameter spar and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. The other key thing to be aware of with this type of uh, choking anchor is if you accidentally clip it the wrong direction and now I'm loading the gate against the trunk. And that is a little bit more hazardous because as you're moving this around, you could conceivably move your anchor in such a way that you unlock it. So I don't know if you saw that there, but I'm actually unlocked now. And now that's gonna be much weaker. And I did that without actually manipulating the gate with my fingers, just by moving my anchor around. It's not very likely, it can happen. Uh, it's also weaker, so cross-loading against the gate is gonna be weaker than cross-loading against the spine. So you really wanna be careful about how you orient that. Gate out, facing away, spine against the tree, use it on big trunks it's gonna be as solid or more solid than the eye splice typically. Let me show you this real quick, right here. So if this was a live oak branch, this would be thick enough for me to actually trust my life on it, uh, assuming the unions below it were all solid. But you gotta know your species, so you wouldn't do that on just about everything. So if you can see here in this kind of loading, the, the branch, my rope is choking the carabiner in such a way that the, the tree branch is applying pressure right here in the middle of the spine such that when I load it heavily, 
I'm basically bending, I'm, I'm making a, a bending moment on the spine in the weak direction. So this is a, a, a configuration that will cause the failure of the carabiner at much, much lower loads than it's rated for. So this would be a dangerous configuration. That would be a super dangerous configuration. That's not something you would want to do. Um, sure, the wood itself is weak-ish, uh, but those of you who know, you know, even, even a relatively small, what, two, three inch diameter branch of oak can hold a lot of weight, and you might actually break the carabiner first. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to choke like this. This is where we get into the quickie. So let's talk about the quickie a little bit. The quickie is designed to be loaded in a number of directions. So if I put the quickie on my line here, and I pass that around the tree, my little small branch, and I get it closed. This is actually, it's still side loading it, but because you have very little leverage, these portions of the device are short, you don't have much leverage, they're steel, they're solid. This is considered safe. So this should still, the, the quickie itself should hold just as much load like this as you would um, you know, pulling it in line like this. So for all intents and purposes, this would be an acceptable use of the quickie. And that's why a lot of people like it, because they say you can cross load it safely. So there's a little bit of a difference there between those two, those two configurations. Another choking anchor that I like to use, because it's quick, um, you'll just use a ring. I've got this one here because this is the one I've got on me, but you, all you need is the ring. And if you pass your rope around the tree, you put the ring on first, put the rope around the tree, and then you put your eye through the rope or through the ring from the inside out, and then block it with a carabiner. This creates a very nice cinching acre. What I like about this, even over the carabiner, is that the friction created by cinching it down tends to keep it in place. You can see that it's not loosening up as I go up and down a little bit like this. Um, and I'm all the rope interaction is rope on metal, which is gonna preserve a higher percentage of the strength of the rope. And I'm not cross-loading the carabiner. I'm just not blocking it into the ring. There's a lot of debate about whether or not this is safe. It is a fairly routine and normal way to use a ring in, in the mountain climbing industry. Um, so it's just something I feel very comfortable with, even though it's not explicitly stated in the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, and you'll have to check those yourself depending on which ring and which carabiners you're using. But it's something I feel very safe using personally. Now, the other nice thing about this is obviously it's really quick and easy to undo. And I'm not likely to drop this ring because it stays on, on my rope between myself and my device. The last anchor I want to talk about here is called the Texas Tug. And it is another choking method that uses some hardware. I've got a little Pinto pulley here. I like the redundancy of the Pinto because even if like this sheave on the pulley were to fail, it's still got this becket. So you've got a relatively solid block of aluminum here with a very short, again, short uh, leverage. So you can have it choked on something pretty small and you're not really cross loading the pulley. Uh, so this ends up being super solid. Again, the weak link is probably the eye splice, even on relatively small tops, but this isn't an explicitly recommended configuration from the manufacturer, so um, never do it. But uh, this is something I feel safe doing. And the nice advantage of having the pulley here is if I were to take the tail of my rope, pass it through this carabiner, this carabiner is actually a little bit small for this. If I were to belay out, you know, bring the tail with me, by integrating the pulley into the system, I can retrieve this with a relatively little friction. And so even if I'm around like a big old spar where I've got branches and it's gonna be a big pain to retrieve, this, this pulley makes that much nicer, that retrieval process, it's just smoother. But it's a little more gear, it's a little more expensive. And again, it's not explicitly recommended from the manufacturer to do just that. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the quickie. So, the Quickie solves a lot of the problems of these other devices we've talked about in that you can use it choked against a spar 
and it is explicitly in the manufacturer's uh, written recommendations to actually use it in this configuration. And, and so it's, you can do it. It also is, uh, you're not gonna cross load it because of the, the reasons I mentioned before, a little short, uh, what do you call it? Short levers, solid steel, really robust construction. It's gonna be relatively safe. I don't like it and here's why. When I go to actually put this on, you have to be super careful about getting that pin all the way through so that both of these little uh, spring-loaded catches get to the other side. And you also have to make sure that the, the tail end that's sticking out is up so that when you load this, I'm not pushing it against the trunk of the tree. So when I first set that up, I did it upside down and I had to take it apart and rearrange it. If it's like this, then you're actually applying pressure against those tiny little pins when you load it, and that's not safe. And the other thing is, this particular pin, it doesn't snap itself into place like a carabiner, right? When I've got a carabiner and I open it, it automatically closes and locks. It's a requirement. Self-locking, self-closing, or self-closing, self-locking carabiners are a requirement by ANSI. And so I don't have to think about it after I, after I hear that click. With this, it could click, I could have it mostly in there, and if I'm not paying really close attention, uh, if I don't get it all the way through, it can wiggle itself free. And just like in the thumbnail picture, a couple of times when I was climbing on this, I look down at my system and realize I'm hanging on a system that's half undone because I had neglectfully not shoved it through all the way. And that happened to me twice. And I'm generally fairly attentive because I'm pretty scared of heights. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. So the fact that it's not self-closing, self-auto-locking makes me hesitant to use it even though the construction of it is safer. Safer, it is more robust. It doesn't care if it's choked. It's gonna be really solid. It might actually support more weight than a choked carabiner. Just the fact that the carabiner will self-close, self-auto-lock, I feel safer with that even if I know I'm gonna compromise the strength of the carabiner ever so slightly with that particular choked configuration. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys there. Um, but that's why I don't like the quickie myself. As always, practice low and slow. Get instruction from a professional. Don't just take my word for it, follow the rules. You keep yourself safe, you are responsible for your own safety. But hopefully you found this valuable and that makes sense to you guys. Climb safe out there and I'll see you next time.